Hey guys, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks. A lot of you have been asking for me to share some Touche content. Now Touche is one of the project birds that I recently took on. He's an Indian ringneck parakeet that was two years old, had a severely butchered wing clip. Shockingly though, against all odds, he could still fly and he torpedoed around my home, which was really fun to document and share with you guys over on Patreon. Now the reason that I exclusively shared Touche's story and journey through all of his videos over on Patreon is because my patrons came to together, they actually started a GoFundMe and made me act immediately. So what I ended up doing was stopping the GoFundMe that they started to create uh, so that I could take on this extra project bird when I did and I just created a special sponsorship tier where people over on Patreon could sponsor me taking on Touche for three months. So that is why it was exclusive to my patrons. I felt like it was something where I could give back to them and they could follow his journey. So if you want to check out his full journey in its entirety over on Patreon, it's patreon.com forward slash bird tricks and you need to be at the cockatoo tier and above which is $10 a month. So with that out of the way, I wanted to give you guys a recap of his journey over there. And he was probably the biggest surprise to me. I thought from everything I had heard from people about Indian ringnecks, I heard that they weren't great for kids, that they are very flighty, um, they're very nervous, they get wild really quickly, all these different things, but of course their talking ability is very alluring to humans. And so I thought <laughs> that Touche was, was young because he was only two years old. So I thought he was gonna be relatively easy. I thought how much damage could possibly be done to a two year old bird. Um, also, he seemed so lively and entertaining with his talking. It was just so cute. And so it kind of gave this allure that he was always sweet which was obviously not the case, as my patrons know. It's actually the opposite, especially if you listen to our podcast about talking parrots. Um, so that backfired. But what I thought I was doing was I was just taking on this cute little extra bird as, as like for fun. I just thought like, oh, okay, well this will be cute on the side. He ended up being the true project bird through it all because although when he first came to me, he seemed like the most confident, the most friendly, easy because he just came right to me it was later that everything just kind of spiraled out of control and it was the more that i focused on lefty the quaker parrot and working with him that i realized he was not going at the same pace as touche and this is kind of why i think that i like why working with one bird at a time is you get to know that bird's boundaries really, really well. Whereas since I was working with two that were semi-bonded, they liked being together, Touche definitely found comfort being around Lefty. Um, it challenged me in a way because things that Lefty was ready for, such as going outside in the aviary, Touche was not. And it would put me totally backwards with Touche and Lefty was fine. Um, going in the batting net, that was something that Lefty loved doing. Touche did not, it was a total nightmare. Um, there were a lot of things that because Lefty was ready and I was going in that direction and really focusing on him and bringing Touche along for the ride, it would constantly remind me like, hey, he's not ready for this, you gotta handle things differently with him. And so it was two different paths. Um, that I really needed to take. So needless to say, not that this was a bad thing, but uh, like a bad experience at all, but I definitely will only be taking on one project bird at a time going forward. So patrons and YouTubers, no talking me into two birds. And I've learned my lesson. I'm not even gonna ask you guys to choose between birds because it's obvious you can't choose. So <laughs> I'm just not gonna get myself into that situation again in the future. Um, this was a really cool learning experience for me. One of the things that I really wanna pass on to you guys is that I know that there's a lot of characteristics and traits of birds that are, uh, what would you even call them? They're, they're not myths, but they're, gosh, what is the word that I'm looking for? Stereotypes, that's what it is. So there's like these bird character stereotypes like scarlet macaws are nippy, um, military macaws are nuts, <laughs> easily heightened. Um, 
<laughs> Bloom gold macaws are easy tempered and sweet. Um, and I'm not saying these as facts, by the way. I'm saying these as uh, stereotypical things that you read online or that people say. Um, so there's, there's those things. And I heard a lot of those things while I was working with Touche. And I have to say it threw me off a few times. I took Touche on a road trip, one of three road trips. And the first one was awful. He, I thought that he was excited to hang out with me. He flew to me once, great. Flew to me twice, bit. Flew to me three times, bit, bit, bit. I mean, it like, it escalated so quickly that I was just like, what the heck happened? I thought we were having a great time. And the input that I got from people was they don't do well with change. They need a constant routine. You can't travel with them. They're very flighty and skittish and easily heightened and they don't do well in changing environments. And all these things that made me get discouraged and I thought maybe I'm not the right person to be working with this bird maybe I can't provide the right environment that he can thrive and build in and I just got really discouraged thinking like oh well you know if you have this type of bird then you just you can't take it on trips with you it's just not good for the bird and I took all these inputs as fact in my mind for a while until I didn't until I realized this isn't fact and this isn't always the case. This is right now. He's not responding so great right now, but it's because I didn't necessarily ease into it. I wasn't really going at his pace. I wasn't as sensitive to him because I had Lefty who was just a trooper and taking everything by storm. And so I just thought like, oh, okay, this is all good. And not realizing like, hey, bring it back. How is Touche doing with this? Do I need to slow down in this area? Um, and so the second road trip, I did things differently. And it wasn't good, it wasn't bad. The first one was bad, guys. Um, so the second one, I would say, was okay. It wasn't stressful to him, but it wasn't really fun either. The third road trip was amazing. It was the best transformation ever. I mean, I was so glad that I pushed all those stereotypes aside and I said, you know what? That might be a lot of birds with a lot of people's uh, experiences, but this isn't gonna be my experience. And I'm gonna understand those personality traits can be keen on this type of bird, but I'm gonna do what I can to embrace that and make it okay. And I did, and it was so awesome. And I think remembering that is so key and so important. And I'll admit that happens to me quite a bit with birds. You know, I'll, especially when it's a type of parrot I haven't worked with hands on as much as maybe I think somebody else has, or, you know, I'm just taking input from people and I start thinking, in fact, I'm like, oh, fact, they're skittish. Fact, they don't like change. Fact, and those are not facts. Those are temporary things. Those are things that you can train or you can work on. You can do desensitization. You can do confidence building exercises. Um, there's so much that you can do. And it's so important not to close those doors on your mind because just because that species is a certain way doesn't mean that that bird that you have is going to be that way. Um, a great example is Cressy, our Congo African Grey. The reason that we got her was because everybody said that African Greys are incredibly hard to free flight train. They're very phobic. The phobic thing was probably one of the worst things that we could hear with our lifestyle. We were just like, oh man, if we we're gonna have a bird that's scared of everything. So one of the things that we did was we did our one new thing a day rule, which is we introduced one new thing a day. Whether that was a person going to a different place or introducing a new thing. So it could have been a thing of chapstick. It could be my camera cap. It, it could be a phone. It could be a pen. It could be a ring. It could be a peg. It could be a glass. It could be anything. It could be your neighbor or a sibling. Um, and this is something that we did with Cressy from day one, understanding the stereotype of African greys is that they are naturally phobic. So in order to build a confident bird and shape her into a confident bird that was less likely to be naturally phobic, we worked on it. And I think that was what was missing for me in the very beginning with Touche. One, just assuming nothing was wrong. Because when I got him from the rescue, it was just kind of like his owner didn't want him. She found it annoying that he flew around. Really? 
so she butchered his wings, which I'm finding, sadly, is very common with these Indian Rainx. I am finding that they get the most butchered wing clips. And I think the reason why, I was actually having a consult with one of my patrons about this, and she had the exact same story of Touche with her bird, and she mentioned, that she thinks people butcher them so badly with their wing clip because they can still fly. So they are such amazing flyers that Touche was flying like crazy around my house even with his butchered wing clip. And once the feathers really started coming in, he was doing even more amazing. So I think in order for people to try to find a way to um, ground these little birds, they are clipping really, really close and it's, it's sad, honestly, it's sad. But anyways, just, the lesson that I really took away from the whole thing was input isn't bad, but remember it's just input. It's just kind of food for thought. It's not fact. It's not how it's going to be forever. And you know, that's something I'm always telling my, my clients when I'm working with consultations and stuff. I'm like, hey, this is what you're going to be doing right now. It's not going to stay like this forever. This is just right now. And then it's going to change. Um, and especially when I talk diet conversions, you know, sometimes people feel really bad. I had a client who was feeding birdie bread every single day to try to work towards a pellet conversion because her bird was so resistant to switching to a healthier pellet that she was incorporating the healthy pellets into the bread and that was the only way to get them in the bird system and I just said I know you're feeling guilty right now but this is only right now the lo the long-term goal and the bigger picture is that your bird is going to be eating the healthier pellets for life that's the goal so if right now for a month you have to feed birdie bread every day and it's higher fat content okay, we can make up for it in other ways. Let's work on the retrieve, let's do some flight, let's do some more activity, let's set up a whole room for your bird to play in and forage. There are ways around it, um, but things are, are temporary, you know, it's not forever, and so I think holding yourself to imp impeccably high standards, <laughs> which I am definitely guilty of doing sometimes, um, really isn't good for any of us. So setting small approximations to reach small goals is is always a good thing and a healthy thing and something I definitely learned with Touche. So one of the interesting things about Touche is I felt like, sometimes I felt like the more comfortable he got, the worse his behavior was. Um, so I constantly changed things up on him just from the standpoint of moving a stand over by two feet. My patrons laughed at this, but um, I had a stand, a play stand, in front of one of my windows, and he consistently learned where all the play stands were in the house, and that's how he would get around, and he would get his food on one, and water on another, and play on another, and he could, he could take himself to any room that I was in to hang out with me, because he really liked just being in my presence. And one day I moved the stand that was in front of the window two feet to the right and he ended up crashing into the blinds and just holding onto the blinds like where the heck did the stand go and I was like buddy it is right here it is two feet away and what I wanted him to learn and why I did that to him was so that he was using his brain it's like don't just memorize where everything is in the house you need to be thinking and looking and this is something that I did with Morgan the Camelot macaw so when I taught her to fly through doorways and turn corners I wasn't always in the same spot and that's because I want her to look. I don't want her to just assume that I'm always gonna be there and just go there every single time. I want her to constantly be using her brain and be ready for anything. And so um, this was the case with Touche. And so once he, got, <laughs> once he got used to me moving stuff around, he started being able to fly and turn and land and then keep up with stuff and it was really cute to see and I think he started enjoying the challenges. He was He's one bird that, like Chi Chi, the kaik that I worked with as a project bird, they love training and so I really hope that he finds somebody who will train him those cute tricks, will train him those interesting routines because he just loves manipulating things and touching things and learning things and I think that's a really awesome trait for a bird to keep even the person busy. Um, so it was it was really interesting. So a recap of him is that I feel like his journey started off like, oh, this is gonna be a piece of cake. I'm not gonna have to do anything to what have I done? What, like, 
this bird is crazy, this bird is scared of everything, this bird's talking is not cute, it actually means it's gonna attack, um, the desensitization was slower, and then I feel like everything just kind of came together and we had a breakthrough at the end, which you guys saw here on the channel when he actually let me pet him. That was the calmest he's been. He let Capri pet him. That's the calmest he's been because I have to admit, I was like, this isn't real. He's only letting me pet him because he's tired. He's only letting me pet him because it's dark. Um, he's only letting me pet him because, like I just, I, I made up excuses of why it wasn't real and why it was maybe just a one-time thing. And then when it happened, opposite of all that he had had 12 hours of sleep he was in broad daylight um he let capri pet him so it transferred i was like oh, okay it's real and that was a huge moment that was that was a huge moment also the road trips were a huge moment i feel like some species of parrots are more in tune with human energy than others um lefty the quaker was more easygoing no matter what mood anybody was in he was always just fairly like go with the flow type of bird touche if i was having an off day where i was just kind of frustrated and i didn't feel like doing stuff or i i don't know i just was kind of agitated he would avoid me or he would just be meaner to me that day like have not meaner but he would have less tolerance for me that day for screw-ups and or miscommunications i should say um and that was really interesting to me however he was also the first to kind of like open my mind in so many different ways and realize where i would st start to doubt myself and doubt my experiences or my abilities and start taking other things as facts or other people's experiences um as having more weight than my own and that's where i really get into trouble i get into trouble when i don't trust my intuition or trust how i'm feeling about something or how what i think an animal is saying to me if i question that and pick it apart too much it becomes very blurry um i need to just go off of what what i feel like is happening i and i I know all of you are probably really sick of all the feels and all the feely stuff from Morgan series because I always talked about all the feels um, and it's, I don't know, to me it feels like a training technique. It feels like a training technique. Of course I would say that. Touche was just a very, I don't know, almost like spiritual bird and I can see why people love having them and I could see just hanging out with him all the time and having the most amazing relationship and so I hope that he has that with whoever is his owner next and I hope that you guys enjoyed his story over on Patreon if you haven't seen it definitely go check it out all of his videos are available over there and those of you that are here on YouTube and got to see some glimpses of him like the first days that I brought him home with Lefty or any videos where I shared him and Lefty together I hope that you enjoyed seeing him because he he was honestly really, really fun, but I could not see myself as an Indian ringneck type of person. I think certain species fit certain types of people, and if you are an Indian ringneck person, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear your favorite traits about these guys, because it takes a special type of person to understand them. I'm convinced of that, and, uh, and I really appreciate all Indian ringneck owners a little bit more now. <laughs> Last but not least, I want to thank my sponsors for allowing me to take on Touche. It was an amazing learning experience for me and I hope it was an amazing learning experience for everybody else. Um, the feedback that I got on Patreon was so touching and it was so cool that some of you have Indian ringnecks and were following along with. There were even some consultations I did where you guys were following the exact training that I was doing and getting the same results, which was so cool. So I love that, I really love that. And I would love to know what type of project bird you guys would like to see me take on next. I have an idea of what I think I want to do next, but I would love your guys' input. Ideally, it would be a type of bird I have not worked with in the past as a project bird. So let me know your opinions, what type of bird, male or female, because one of the things I realized through this journey is that I've only worked with one female project bird. I don't know how or why that's happened, but that's just kind of how it's been. So I would love to hear from you guys. Again, thank you so much to my sponsors. All your names are in the description. Um, 
and thank you to my patrons for making this possible. It was really fun, but one bird next time, guys. One bird. <laughs>